and everybody. See, I'm not here to tell you that you are a sinner. You have faith, but your communication is shallow. Even when you are like, okay, let's go for evangelism, there's something weak about your presence. You know what? He says that the communication of your faith may become effectual. You know what that means? It means it is productive. Are we following what I'm saying? Please just follow the calm way I'm taking this because I need this to sink. So some of you have that faith, but your communication is not, even when you write things, I know what you want to say, but you lack, you lack a spiritual burden of words. So he said, I want to help you so that the communication of your faith may become effectual. Are there such people here? That you, you know, you wake up, you feel special. But you just feel like, you know, every time, even when you interact with people, there's just this weakness. Yeah, that thing is real. Uh, Philemon is a, was a, someone Paul was mentoring and he had to advise him. So that the communication of your faith, we all have that faith thing. That's even why you are in church. That's why you are listening this way and you've not fallen asleep. You have that faith thing. But for many of you, it's still weak. You know, we even tell you, do this. There's just still the weak thing. But there's a solution. There's a solution. Let me tell you anybody, there's a solution. <laughs> so don't feel discouraged. If I say, I don't even know, I'm stopping that thing. I won't do the video again. I'm not even, that book, I'll postpone it. No, it's a lie. That the communication of your faith may become effectual. Why? People of God, there's no arrogance. By the acknowledging of who I am. So that I can tell you and say, um, please, don't miss Thursday service. Why? There's something I'm going to be speaking on. It will change your life. Not that you know, please try and be around, you know. <laughs> sure, you know. You know, let's be coming to church. Oga, you won't even be a leader. You are weak. And you know the problem? It's not just to say, oh, you're Britain. Breathe out. Hell, yeah, go upstage. No. All of that will fail you until you acknowledge that guy, Pastor Shego, is sound. Where I can tell you and say, see, come to fragrance of life. Eh? Your life will change. Pastor, why are you talking that way? I'm not proud. I'm only acknowledging every good thing that is in me. You're having an issue. I can tell you, okay, there's a book I wrote. Go and read it. Eh? Read it back to back two times. Your life will not remain the same. Pastor, I like the way you talk. No, I'm acknowledging. As from now, stop endorsing comments of weakness. Stop celebrating. You know, we, we are just starting. We are small. Those words are spirits. You are not acknowledging what God put. You are acknowledging what men put on you. Are you following what I'm saying? Please understand this strategy and let it work for you. That acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Acknowledge every good thing. Now listen very well. Listen and let me give you a strategy. Never acknowledge the bad things. In your own mind, you are being real. That bad thing will be real. <laughs> yes, I know you know you when you did that thing, when you did that video, it was only 15 likes. Stop, you know, it was just stop, stop using that to 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 give yourself. You know, there's a way you give yourself an advance shame. Who gets what I'm saying? You see, you know, I just had to, even if you go there, you might not self five. No, 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 no. Tell someone, listen to that video. Just go to that video. I did it on Tuesday, uh, September 4. Go and listen to that video. There was something I explained. Gradually, your communication will become effectual. But you know, go, just go and check. Even though the video, yeah, we did not many people watched it, though, you know. <laughs> you know, you are acknowledging bad things. And it's weakening you the more. But you don't know. So the Bible says that the communication of your faith may become effectual. If you want your communication to become effectual, then acknowledge good things in you. Acknowledge good thing. You don't have this, but you have this. Focus on what you have and acknowledge it. Now, people of God, there's something I wrote here on the meaning of acknowledge. Do you know that acknowledge is different from knowledge? 
That's why some of you are making a mistake. Huh? Knowledge is to just be aware. To acknowledge, I use this, I said don't ignore it or make it look insignificant. So let me give you a simple example. Okay? You were organizing maybe your first conference and then your dad walked in. Of course, when you were upstage, you saw him. Seeing him is called knowledge. But at a point in time, you make him evident. I say, people of God, please, I would like you to just be on your feet and help me celebrate. You know, I wouldn't have been able to do this without this person. That is acknowledgement. Please let me celebrate my dear dad. He's came, he just walked in. And everybody turned. You know what I'm saying? See, there are things in you. Your knowledge is not enough. Acknowledge it. <laughs> Acknowledge. Make it evident. Uh, if you told you you are proud, you are proud. And that's how, look at how you are being humiliated anymore. Acknowledge it. Don't just have knowledge of it. What do you do? I counsel people. Are you serious? How many people do you counsel? Well, that's what I do. I counsel people, especially people who want to do, you know, do this and do that. So that's what I specialize in. <laughs> ah, but the other day when I came to your office, I even found out that, you know, not many people were around. Yes, but we are working on things. So we're actually creating a network. Where, yeah, you know what you're doing. Not there, you know. <laughs> I, <laughs> we're, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. You don't know that thing is really affecting you. And that's why your communication is not effective. Listen to me. There are some of you. Okay, let me put it this way. There are people that you can invite to a place to speak. And they finished speaking. Everybody was standing and were like, what? And they said she's the head of, you know, Global Children Something Initiative. Okay? And then you run up to meet her after the, service, after the conference. You're like, Hi, you know, please, I want to know, can I, can I get to know your office? I don't have an office yet. I'm like, hey, okay, okay. Do you have any material? Ah. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't have any material yet. But, uh, you know, it's just based on my personal study I spoke. You know what that person has? Okay? confidence in what she has. You have office, your plaza, see everything. Whenever you know, even when God gave you that big space, you looked for fault. You just so introduce yourself, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm actually very little among everybody here, you know, but I don't know. <laughs> you are not going to make your communication to be effective. <laughs> it's, are, are you getting what I'm saying? I remember some years back, I spoke in a particular meeting, uh, uh, Christian Booksellers Association of Nigeria, they were having, they had a, a kind of a conference in Abuja. And I said, they told me, I said, ah, Pastor Shekun, please, we want to just share something in the breakfast uh, session. Okay. All right. And so there's something about me. I could laugh with you before the service, before I start preaching, but when I go upstage, I don't really identify you. Okay. So, I just, oh, all of them sat down. Okay, so I hear the speaker, they did praise and worship and everything. And I said, okay, you can come up and speak. And then, you know, I love that thing. When, you know, by the time you're going off stage, people are looking at you like, wow, okay, he's the pastor, right? <laughs> he's the pastor. By the time you start speaking, just notice the eyeballs are just, mm, just see. I see it a lot, even with some of you here. Just see. Mm, mm, just see. Mm. <laughs> you know that, all this heating. <laughs> you know why? I went there because I knew that, okay, because I've been there a few times and so I've seen it, oh, everything. But I knew that, guys, when I come up to speak, you will know I am sound. You will know this guy studies Bible. He's not borrowing the Greek or Hebrew. He knows it. And when I finished speaking, I was surprised. I saw a queue. Wait, don't say, please, where's your church? Where's the hey, Can I please get your number? Can I please, really? Why? What if I went there not acknowledging what I have? I will even say truth without confidence. You know, so the, the Greek word is, uh, the Greek word is, is actually, you know, is suke. Amen, suke. You know, suke, you don't, even, you don't look serious. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. There is a showing. There is a showing. Some of you are approved, but you are not showing it. You don't even look approved because you lack confidence. So the Bible says, you know, the solution by acknowledging. Let them tell you and say, please, there's a program coming up. We're having Polar White. We're having this. We need another person who can do it. You know, we, you know, like a thought speaker to take the session with the, oh, okay, all right, I'm available. I'm going to check my calendar if I'm free. Like, really, are you sure you can do it? Do what? 
they are going to be wild. You see, women need to, and then you begin to analyze things, and then your communication becomes effectual. So there are some of you that have deeper knowledge than some people speaking in some conferences you attended. But the difference with them is that they can say foolish things with confidence. But you are saying truth with shyness. That the communication of your faith, everyone you see here who is wanting to bet something, bet something, what you are trying to bet is called communication. You want the world to celebrate you. Don't pretend. You want people to know you and read your book and read your article. And you know, I want that. Why is it that? I don't like the way people look down on me. Yes, what we are talking about is communication. You want, to, you want to reach the world and get an applause as feedback. It's part of our calling. We are all kings born in Eden and then born in Christ, of course. Okay? That the communication of your faith may become effectual, achieving results. Why? By the acknowledging of every good thing. Do a video. Let there be four views. But tell people, go and watch that thing. Listen to what I said in the 17th minute. You get what I'm saying? No, you know, I didn't really. You know, I just, most time I just share. No, no. It's not about how they were even looking at you. Even you will, you won't become effectual. But you can imagine studying for a meeting, knowing that anybody that comes for that meeting, they can't remain the same. There's, there's a way, there's a way you proceed knowing you carry capacity. Please, people of God, as much as they are visionaries here, find a way to acknowledge what you carry. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Why is it that in fragrance of life, I can, I can give a lot of people platforms? Because I know what many of you carry. Acknowledge it. Stop going to places and then feeling like you don't know anything. Acknowledge what you carry. You do a kind of business and you are good at it. Tell anybody, if you see... Come and meet me. I'll tell you what these guys are doing is rubbish. I mean, don't insult people and make it look like others are fake. But you know you know better. Acknowledge it. And the Bible is not saying sometimes you don't find fault. You know, the Bible said when they went to the promised land, land of Canaan, the Bible said they brought up negative reports. And God revealed something to me years ago. He said reports are brought up. <laughs> Mention a church to me. Anywhere in this world, I can tell you a fault. Ah. Mention someone you believe in so much. I can mention a fault. But you don't bring it up. Okay? By the way, before you even believe that, you know, okay, let's keep it. Even you, you have a negative thing. Something is imperfect yet with you. Okay? But reports are brought up. So, Joshua went to the promised land and brought this one. They looked for that one and brought it. The two people are right. But I'm very scared. There's something you are right about and it make you miss the promised land. Uh, I don't know what I said there. Because you are right does not mean it to make you enter the promised land. So sometimes, you know, you know, Pastor, see, I know myself. The truth is, I see many times when I see crowd, there's a way I just get weak. Um, I actually, what you are saying is true. It's true. But that thing can make you not to achieve destiny. So you know what you should begin to focus on? Stop focusing on that thing that comes when you see crowd. Begin to focus on how the crowd can be blessed by the content you carry. And then your communication will become effectual. Many of you dwell so much on your incapacities. So everywhere you go, you are weak. You know? so, and I just want to lead prayer. And I, why, why are you like that? Believe in what you carry. Tell people this is what I do. And because of that, you, you, you express yourself. Let me give you a quick, quick example. Go to Titus chapter 1 verse 1. Let me just show you certain things. And then I will even ask you to just choose some scriptures for yourself. Titus chapter 1 verse 1. People of God, see examples of how to introduce ourselves. See how he started the letter. Paul, servant of God, <laughs> and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. And the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. You are saying these guys are humble. These guys first of all show you who they are before they start giving you advice. Now, please judge. Just go to the first chapter one of chapter, verse one and chapter one of many scriptures, of many books of the Bible. You're going to see this in Ephesians, Second Corinthians, and all of that. I think it's just the book of Hebrews that doesn't have that. Just choose anyone, chapter one, verse one. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Through the will. Look at look at the introduction. Look at the introduction. 
For many of you, you will have started with Dekweleo. <laughs> Leo, can we can we come in? This is this is how Paul called. Ah, ah, look at that. look at the assurance of these guys. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and and sustains about who wrote it with him. Give me another book. Look at this. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. These guys introduced themselves with acknowledgement. I know we had a baby dedication here. The the couples were telling me after the or the couple were telling me like, okay, the, the husband first of all told me and then the the wife told me later and said, man, that when they got home, those guys were like, who is this pastor? That they have never heard a teaching like that in their life. He said, well, like the pastor. Ah. He said, no, this guy is not a pastor. He's a teacher. Pastor Shagun, why are you saying it that we acknowledge that truly the Holy Spirit that called me is mightily with me in knowledge? I'm not doing anything too much. This guy, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. So let's just give us one more scripture. Let's just see one. This is how these guys introduce themselves. This is how the, this is, go on, go on, I've said this, go and find a way to introduce yourself. Acknowledge it. Okay, just send it down, maybe Ephesians or something. All right, look at this again. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ. This is how these guys introduce themselves. These guys are simply saying we are not weak. We know who we are. I know you are starting small, but your content is big. Acknowledge that one that is big. Not, you know, I'm just starting. You know, this is where, this is the place for now. No. That's why whichever hall we go, someone could say, where is Hall of Fame? It doesn't matter. Come here. It might look like a 200 seater capacity, but don't worry. It is a hall of fame. It is a hall, and we call it that, and it keeps becoming that. See how many people do things here with this size of church. What happens by the time we are 15,000? You want to imagine how we are going to control a city? It's a hall of fame. But pastor, you know hall of fame is big. We are big. Okay? Acknowledging. By the acknowledging. Learn to acknowledge. Learn to acknowledge. Can we do a little school here? Put your barrel to paper and acknowledge something about yourself. Acknowledge something about yourself. Write out your competence. Don't do, uh, you know, I'm still starting even though for now. No, don't do all of those things. Acknowledge things and then begin to focus on those things. Write it down. Things you know you are good in. So that you, you're gonna, it's going to make sure that that thing will become a, a, an aspect of your marketability. Because for some of you, for every opportunity that presents itself, your weakness is what you acknowledge. Ah, how many are they ordering for? They are ordering for 50. Hey, but you know, I don't really have. No. Write down the things you are, you are competent in. Things that God has put in you. Not even your parents put in you. You notice that when you study scriptures, man, you just, you just have scriptures for teenagers. Uh -huh, that, that's a competence. So that you stop letting people look down on you because you can't ride the bicycle. Ooh, how does that connect? What if they know your other side where you are, you, you carry teenagers in your womb? You carry, that is a competence. Acknowledge it. And then you know what you're going to do after acknowledging it? Begin to build on those things. Begin to build on those things. If you come right now, say for a she will say you have knowledge. Now, come and code something for us. Come I don't know how to code. Huh? But if you want a destiny to move, even me, I know. I have seen it happen practically that by God's grace, if you stay so long with Pastor Shegun, there is a grace that will rub off on you. But I don't have to pretend now and say, you know what, hey, you know, I want, there's something about Microsoft that you know I want to, you know, there's this code they use. I don't know that code. I want to buy a laptop and nobody will steal it. I want to buy a laptop. <laughs> I, can, I can do that one, you understand? But it's not to now, it's not to now, you know, be making me look down on myself because of things God did not give to me. That's the error some of you are making. So you are like, you know, you know, the people look at you and say, you know, you don't even have body. But if you know what I have. That's actually what makes people very shy and intimidated. When people make you focus on who you are not. They said if you judge a fish by his ability to climb a tree, 
You will say a fish is foolish. Then you now judge a monkey by its ability to swim. So some of you are, you've, you've lost your confidence because you are allowing people to judge you by who you are not. Okay? So I walk into the hall, into the hall and you're like, Vashek doesn't even walk like a lady. I'm a man. So you know what you say? There's something I don't like about him. He doesn't walk like a woman. I'm, I can't walk like a woman. So people are looking down on you and then you, because you are now acknowledging things that God did not put in you. Okay? Someone tells you, you know, you are not even good in acting drama. I'm not a drama queen. I'm not a diva. Okay? But when it comes to something else, man, mention my name there. I will explain it to you. Those things you wrote down, it can help you build even an enterprise. And then you develop character because they say, who are you? This is who I am. Find a way to introduce yourself. Do you understand? Find a way to introduce it. God has helped me with that thing. Every article you see me write, you see Sheikh Mabi at the end, there is a confidence I have in myself. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. not the one that, who wrote it? No, don't put my name. She, no, no, Sheikh Mabi. <laughs> I know people that just speak to someone, they're like, you know, um, you know who is your pastor? Sheikh Mabi, Sheikh Mabi, Sheikh Mabi. You will see that name. You will see it. Pastor, why are you doing it? Acknowledge it. That this depth of knowledge came from a man blessed by God in knowledge. Hallelujah. This thing really matters. I hope that blessed someone. All right. And then the last point is after you have gotten all of these things, please use it. That's why I say you can build an enterprise. So just write, use it, use it, use it, use it. If you use it, there's a way it becomes established in you. A man did a short experiment with some people in, a, in, a, in an event. And he said... Everybody check your right hand, check your left hand. Okay? And he said, if you notice, he said the right hand is usually, for, the, for those that use the right hand motion, is usually a bit bigger than the left. And not just that a bit bigger. In fact, if you look at the two, your two hands, okay, give yourself a firm grip. Okay, just do this, okay? You will notice that there's one that grips more. <laughs> okay? Because that's why if you want to blow someone, you know the hand to use. Because there's one you use and it's not firm. But there's one because it's what you've been using. Every time you are carrying bucket, that's the hand. You are opening a door, that is the hand. You are pushing something, that is the hand. So some height has become stronger. Okay? People of God is a spiritual principle. What you use more, you become better in. Okay? I can feel the grip of my right hand. It's gripping like I'm angry. But the left, I'm having to be intentional to force it and all of that because I don't really use this. Okay? So it is always like that. If you want to grow in something and you want it to be established, use it more. You hear someone that says, you know, ah, you know, every day I pray for two hours. Two hours. What are they saying? Don't worry. Eh? Keep praying. Keep praying. You will find that a time will come. One hour will be like, you know, you're just giving thanks. Then let me now start the main one. <laughs> That's why I said it converts your soul. You just find out that you are changing. Okay? So, all right. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 12. God wants someone here to know something. That you see, water will not become wine inside that pot until you carry it out and move with it. Because as you go, that is how a miracle takes place. Okay? So, if you want to see your character develop, can I give you an advice, people of God? Mm? I started ministry as a, certain, as a certain level. Let me give you an advice. You see, many of you are here saying, there's something I want to do, but you know, Kai, you know, I really need God to work on me. Listen to me. It is as you go that you become wine. If you want to wait and say, okay, let's keep looking at the pot, la katambe, le brochure, e ga 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 ga. We will still go to Canada today. We will see them there. We will see their game. What are you guys waiting for? You say, we want this thing to turn to one. Some of you are waiting too long because you are just on the spot using prayer to cover up for what movement you do. Even though Jesus is there, it will not turn to one. So what are you going to do? You will need to fetch it. And then you'll be going, listen very well. Sometimes you'll be going to the governor of the feast, palpitating, sweating. Hey, what's going to happen? 
What's going to happen? That is how it works for everybody. It's a work of faith. God can call you while he's still asking you, how many husbands do you have? And a few minutes after, you become an evangelist. So for those of you waiting, you know, I, I, I know I just want God to work on me. Don't worry. The work itself is a process. It's a process with God. Okay? So for those of you waiting for that water to become wine, Say, you know, I'm trusting God that you know, ah, he, you know, he told us to fetch it, so we fetch it. La, ja, da, ba, da, ba, de. Ili, ga, 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 ga. What are you praying about? You know, I want this thing to become one. Oga, move. As you move, the water will become one. Because this is what happens. Sometimes we give it to the governor with our hands shaking. Uh, sorry, sir, I don't. Who gets what I'm saying? I actually don't know what I brought to because I'm actually, you know, but. And he said, wow, this is sweet. And then you rearrange yourself. Yeah, it's sweet, actually. It's very nice, very good. Uh, yeah, you know, we, 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 you know, we produce the best wine. <laughs> Listen to me. All of us, it happens that way. All of us. You do things and you are not even sure if it's going to produce. Or you just know he told you to go. That's the word you have. You just have this thing go. And so you just carry, you know, so, you know, okay, let me print a handbill. Just 50. <laughs> 50 handbills. What's the program? Let's call it School of Impact. Hmm? Because it's a school that will impact people. So what? We don't know. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. But let's try invite people. And then gradually, wow, honestly, Pastor, I was blessed. This message was for me. And then you be, your confidence begins to grow. That is how it works. So if you want to be established in something, many times when you hear me say things like, you know, I've been in ministry for over 12 years, it's because as you proceed, there are things you become establishing. But some of you are waiting to get things done when you are not even moving. The wine, will, the water will not become wine just because you fetched water. So some of you have done things, you've taken steps, but what is now remaining is that you now need to move with what you have. Help me tell your neighbor, use it. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Sorry, Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 12, okay? 12 to 14. Now, look at what he complained about. The same thing pastor has complained to some people about. Okay? You're like, how long have you been sitting under me? You've been years now. By now, you should, you should be the one I should tell and say, okay, you know what? You're in charge of those 15 people. All right? For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you still have need for one to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. This makes me know that most leaders complain about this thing. You should have grown beyond this now. We are still at this level, still teaching you how to do this and do that. It doesn't work that way. The first principles of the oracles of God. And you have become meat. Verse 13. Follow this very well. Brother. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. In the word of, unri of righteousness. Okay? For he is a babe. What's the problem with these guys? You know what it is? What they use. Hmm? What they use is the problem. See, eh? be careful of that bias in you listening to God's word and you pick things that are very easy. Because that is what you are using. It makes you a child. Okay? So how did this person become a child? How did he become a babe? He became a babe or she became a babe because he's using milk. He doesn't want to do things that demand skill. Let's see the next verse. I love this scripture. But strong meat, solid life, Belongs to them who are of full age. What is the meaning of full age? They've crossed 30, they're over 